am I in the wrong? I got married a few weeks ago and my parents hijacked my wedding. They had family members deliver unplanned speeches. They left the wedding before it ended and took the limo they said would be for us. They wanted to discuss all the issues they had with the wedding. Me not respecting my, uh, my culture. Me cursing on the mic when I said I want everyone to turn up. If you don't do that, how are people supposed to know when it's they can officially turn the up? What happens if you turn the up early? You can't be turning the up while the bride is walking down the aisle. That's all I'm saying. Us being mad about my cousin yelling at my wife about a lack of Afro beats and more. I went off on them, then they walked out of their house and we haven't talked since. This is why it's important to maintain respect in the first place. The fact that he hasn't maintained a level of respect in his relationship with his own family makes them feel as though they can do that. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolutions being podcasted, and I am excited. What's going on, Harry? Dante, always ready to rock and roll, always ready to help people out. And this is a question, really, Dante, not just about relationships, but how much to let other people involve in your relationships and your lives. I got married a few weeks ago, and my parents hijacked my wedding. First of all, they didn't attend my welcome party the night before. I invited them over to my house and they didn't come or respond to my message. They had family members deliver unplanned speeches that we didn't know would happen. They left the wedding before it ended and took the limo they said we would be for us. We then went to see them following the wedding and they wanted to discuss all the issues they had with the wedding. This included me cursing on the mic once when I said I want everyone to turn the f- up, which is a great way to... <laughs> <laughs> All right. I have no problem with that. Uh, listen, yeah. how, 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 I usually say that at weddings. I always say I that. Mean, if you myself. don't do that, how are people supposed to know when it's they can officially turn the fuck up? That's all I, I'm saying. I I don't. I don't know. You got to people know. Man. Someone's got to take happens, charge. What happens if you turn the fuck up early? It's not cool. You can't tur- you can't be turning the fuck up while the bride is walking down the aisle. That's all I'm saying. Me not respecting my uh, my culture. Me questioning them about the unplanned speeches, us being mad about my cousin yelling at my wife about a lack of Afro beats and more. I went off on them, then they walked out of their house and we haven't talked since. My wife is very upset and sad too. Am I in the wrong? Oh, wow. I, I don't even know why you would ask if you're in the wrong. Because first of all, uh, you, I, mean, I mean, come on. How much Afro beats do you need? Let's be honest. So <laughs> that's the first thing. Here's because what... it wasn't because the wording of this wording is very important. It's not yeah. that there weren't Afro beats; that oh, there much, there yeah. wasn't enough Afro beats. There wasn't enough Afro beats. Well, here a lack of uh, a lack of a lack of could mean none. You scallywag! Oh boy, you uh, you <laughs> the nerve! You can't! How dare you? Here's. Here's the thing what I say about this is why it's important to maintain respect in the first place. First of all, anytime these people feel as though they can do all of that, it's because they've been this. Now, I don't know how long this guy has been with this girl. I'm assuming he's been with her a reasonable time. I don't know how long he's been around the family, but this is a this is the thing that you have to maintain uh, your own personal respect, uh, your respect as a man, because the only reason why people would actually de- go out of their way to kind of stir this kind of nonsense up on your day is because they don't respect you. They definitely don't respect. And I don't know if, I guess it was his family. It was his, it family. was his family, not her family, which I makes know. this a little bit, it's, uh, <laughs> I'm not more interesting, but it's not like her family is stepping out of pocket. It's his right. family. Right. So it's his family that doesn't don't, they don't respect him. In the first place. And there's a reason for that. That's because uh, in general, this is a situation where, you know, I, I talk about this all the time. There's the uh, that statement, blood sticking in water. But the real statement, the real uh, cliche or, or saying is uh, the blood of the the blood of the covenant is stronger than the wo- water of the womb. That's the actual whole quote mm-hmm. or the whole saying. What Which it means, means it's the opposite. It is the, the act. Yeah. The blood of the covenant is what you and I have. It's the agreement. A, it's a choice that we make to be friends, to respect each other, 
to help each other to put ourselves in a in, in a in a friendship like we we decide to be in a covenant. Water of the womb, meaning just the people that happen to be we happen to be related to. And unfortunately, more over than not, um family members perceive the fact that they 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 take advantage or they perceive a certain uh level of 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 comfort uh, a comfort or acumen that they have in a in a relationship that they have with their family members because they don't feel like they have to respect them so that's the first thing the second thing is uh um no you're not wrong so let's start with that no you're not wrong it's your wedding um it's your wedding you have been you have been in a in a situation where this is the woman that you choose and this is why I'm 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 real funny about weddings in general like I, you 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 spend this money time energy money you spend way more money than anybody else the wedding industry knows that this is a a a, a point of uh of 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 sensitivity by your wife so they sell they they increase the prices. They jerk you around. They spend you spend all kinds of money for people who, in a, in a lot of cases, really don't mean the best for you in the first place. I am an advocate of a destination wedding, and I'll mm -hmm. tell you why I'm an advocate of a destination wedding. Because um, if you have a destination we wedding, it gives people the ability to say, "No, I don't want to go." And you can invite people that you don't necessarily want to come. And they, they, a lot of times they won't come. If they don't want to come, they won't come. And if they do, and people who come to your destination wedding are the people who really want to be there because they have to make an effort to be there. Um, so it's always a thing where you create this big, this wedding, you spend all this money and then people go in debt. And then to and where half your cousins and your aunts and uncles Want to talk about how how soggy the string beans were, how the layout wasn't good, that the cordon blue was dry, the chicken was dry, whatever. And so this gives an opportunity for people who don't really mean you any good in the first place. We, we have to be mindful of how people treat us at all times and we don't let anything go. You, If people are not making an effort to be respectful, there's a reason why that is because they don't respect you. And that's we need to understand that. The the fact that whatever it is, it's his time, it's his his place, it's her, their time, it's really his wife's moment. And the fact that he hasn't maintained a level of respect in his life, in his relationship with his own family, makes them feel as though they can do that. And and so you you gotta you gotta put the you gotta lay down the law initially or well, out. Yeah. Well, the thing about this is it's uh, it goes to the thing we always talk about, Dante, where people treat you the way you allow yourself to be treated. Right. So all of this happened long before the wedding. So, sure, sure, sure. because, uh, you know, when you know, when like Al Capone or something gets married or like when if Suge Knight gets married, no one's coming up to Suge Knight. Right. Or just think of the most violent people, you know, no one's coming up to them and going, hey, this is what I think should happen. Yeah. Right. And because somebody's going to say, I don't give a damn about what you think. Right. I don't give a fuck. Also, there's repercussions for it. Right. So this all of this is the way you have allowed your parents to treat you in years past. So that's why they're able to just ignore your text, not go to the welcome party here. That's why they have the nerve to, to have family members make unplanned speeches yeah. because they feel like, hey, they don't could, care. They don't care. This is what we want. Yeah. And so we're going to do it. And because there's not going to be any repercussions and you're not going to do anything about it, mm -hmm. then we feel comfortable doing it. And That's they've you to do that throughout the relationship. If you love what we're doing here, go to Patreon.com. It's the best way to support us and check out all the bonus content. That's right. Patreon.com slash Manschool202. We do weekly bonus episodes. We do listener mail, dating tips. And also, if you love the show, you can go back to the archive starting from episode one. All the episodes will be there at Patreon.com slash Manschool202. And all, it's just, it's all over and over again as, as I come in contact with guys. I do consultations. I, the the way we set this up, the way you set up the relationship in the beginning is the way it ends up in the end, only worse than it was when you set it up. Um, it, it's just really, really unfair. I think in one, uh, if I'm if I'm correct, they took the limo. 
They did take the limo, right? They took the limo um, for whatever reason. And they felt comfortable doing that, right? Because there's not going to be any repercussions. Also, here's the other thing. This is also why you don't want other people paying for shit. Right, right. Because then you're at the behest of what the other people want to do. Because I guarantee you the parents paid for the limo. That's probably mm-hmm. part of it. I, I mean, I don't even know if you could say that. The the, uh, the audaciousness of the way that they're acting in general, I would even imagine that they, they're they not even paying for the wedding. Um, they, I, I would imagine they're probably not paying for the wedding at all, and they just feel as th- they feel a level of entitlement where they can just do and say whatever they want. And, and you see this over and over again. You have to hold people accountable, including your family members. Otherwise they will ruin your life. Now here's a situation. What's the, what's the state of his, his wife after this? I mean, she's probably still devastated about this whole thing. I mean, this is still a a point of contention. My wife is very upset and sad too. And I get it. Yeah, of course. Cause it doesn't sound like she got involved at all, which means like they're they're you know, for your, your cousin to, to curse out your wife or yell at your wife, you know, that's but because you've allowed that in the past. Somebody cursed his wife out too. Yeah, the cousin cur- that was over the af- the lack of Afro beats, which you can um, look whether or not there was a lack of Afro beats. That's debatable. Yeah, um, now, I mean, that is that is a point of contention. But hey, come on now. This is his wedding. If he if he has banned Afro beats at his wedding, that's his that's his prerogative. If he's wearing the lace dress, then he can complain about the Afro beats. Otherwise, you shut right. your mouth. The cousin was yelling at it because the cousin felt comfortable in the past. All these things are things yeah. you've trained your family to do because yeah. you didn't stand up to them in the past. So you have to dictate what kind of person you are. The problem is we always do this thing in society where we want to be proper in front of our folks. We don't want to upset them. So you're a you know turn the fuck up type of guy. Right. And yet... I don't even think he's a turn the fuck up guy. I, th- I think he's, he's really a dude... Who just wanted everybody to have a good time. I, All right, you know, but my, my point, Dante, is this. If you're a guy who's, who's fine with cursing on the mic, I'm not criticizing him. I'm saying, right, right, what's, right. what's the big deal? Hey, I'm with my friends. We're having a party. I want, I want everyone to turn. I, I shout into the microphone, let's get fucked up and have a good time. If that's the type of person you are and mm-hmm. your family has been, I guarantee you this is not the first time they're giving him crap about it. Oh, no. Right? No. So in the past, it, hey, don't curse at the barbecue. You, you don't use that type of language. You have to, at that moment, those little battles are what set everything up. So if you're at a barbecue and you're like, oh, man, let's have a fucking good time. And she goes, hey, watch your language. Hey, hey, why don't you get out? You can get out. I don't yeah. care if you're my mom or not. You can get yeah. out. You can't talk to your mom, my, your mom like that. Well, you can get out with her. Let me call both of you an Uber and you can get get the fuck out of my house. Let me, let me just say this. Uh, this is a question that was asked. And so you're not wrong at all. But you are wrong for not setting up the parameters and the boundaries that should have been set up in the first place. Interesting thing. I have a, a, a my uh, one of my older best friends, his his son got married. Right now, um, I've been you know, I'm the type of guy that that gives, you know, if people are my friends, I will always, you know, if they're in a bind, I'll always kind of step in and say, hey, did you ever consider this? And for many years, his his older sister was just awful to him, just horrible. And when we um, by friend, you mean your friend Dante Nero? Is that who you're talking about? Is this one of those things? Well, by, well, he I, well, actually, it's a friend of mine that I worked with at the phone company for many years. So, okay. you know, who that is, oh, right? I know who that is. OK, yeah, yeah. So his his sister was awful to him. Right. And I said to him, you know, but he kept. We, you know, we grow up with this thing. Well, family, everything is family, family first. Now, that's not true. I mean, because there's family that will treat you like w- treat you worse than anybody else will treat you. And if you can, if you can't. And I mean, even you've gone through that, Harry, where sure. you have, where you grow up, grow up with that intention on, well, family, family. And this is my mom. This is your mom's wild for the night or your dad's being disrespectful. And sure. we've had these conversations about, well, you have to set these boundaries I don't care if it's your mother, father. You don't, nobody gets to make your life uh, miserable. I don't no. care what they owe you. I, I don't no. care what you think they owe you. You know. 
By the way, Dante, uh, for people, this is the type of information and the advice. I'm glad this listener reached out to you. If you need some type of life advice, relationship advice, dating, sex tips, whatever you need, if you need some help, you can always do a personal consultation with Dante. Go to DanteNero.com and click on consult if you want to have a consultation with Dante. If you want to have a consultation with me, you can email me at advicefromharry at gmail.com and we can help you with all your problems no matter what they are. It's no different. In fact, it's worse. Your family treats you worse than like a coworker would treat you, somebody on the street would treat you because they feel a comfort in getting away with it when you allow them to do it. They Family does things... When it when it gets toxic with a family, family does things that they would never do with somebody else. That they wouldn't have the decency, right. which makes it which makes you realize, oh, you know how to behave, right, right. Because I right. know you don't do this at work, right. Because you'd be fired if you talk to somebody the way you talk to me at your job, you'd be fired. So you know how to behave, but you take all your anger and all the things that you can't control in the world, and you choose to channel them in a situation that you do have control. Because we allow it. Because I'm not going to... Because you're my mom, so I'm not going to... I had I had a thing. I'll repeat this story. My mom... I forgot about this when I moved back home in this area. You know, my mom used to scream and yell at everybody. Mm -hmm. Everybody. And then um, I remember I showed up at the house one time just to visit my mom. And she was just in a mood. She was just either whatever you want to... Whether it's menopause or just being Latina. Let's Whatever it is. It was, it was that before. Menopause. That's what I'm saying. But yeah. uh, as an old lady, whatever you want to say it is, I know that she's always done that. She starts screaming at me, going this, that, blah, blah, blah. I go, hey, you better calm down. No, nah, I don't need to calm down. Everything. She's trying to pick me up or something. That's right. I needed a ride from her. That's yeah, what yeah. the fuck it I was. Remember I remember yeah, this. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm piecing it together because there's so many you blank them out. I needed a ride for her. My, I needed her to pick me up from the mechanic. Some shit that I needed her to do. Right. She can't find the directions of where we're going because she's older. And I'm not screaming. I don't mind. I don't care. I'm like, right. whatever it is, it is fine. It she's out. on the phone yelling. I don't know where it is. Where are you at? What are you moving? Blah, blah, blah. And I go, listen, uh, I'm not going to get yelled at. Don't worry about picking me up. Don't worry about it. Mm. I'm, I'm out. I'll walk home. I'll walk the two miles. I don't care. And she calls me back. I can't find the place. I go, stop yelling at me. Don't call me again. I don't need the ride. Finally, she sees me on the road, picks me up. I didn't find her. She happened to find me, picks me up. She starts yelling again. I go, I just told you that I'm not going to yell. I will walk out of this car right now. Uh, and I had to do that. She called me up later to apologize, right? This was her apology. Uh, she goes, I'm sorry, but but I'm, you know, I'm your mother. Your mother, only your mother can yell at you. I go, I don't, uh, maybe you don't understand. I go, I don't care. Uh, oh, this was this. Um, forgive me for piecing this together, guys. I apologize. I know this is all over the place because it's just it makes no logical sense. So you're trying to piece together. She goes, uh, "Well, listen, I yell at everybody. I go, I don't care if you're every. I don't care who else you yell at. You mm -hmm. will not yell at me, right? Because we will not have a relationship. I'm fine with not speaking to you. I yell at. I don't care that you what you what you, what you do with everyone else. I can't control that. And then and then she goes. Then she tries very sweet. Oh. Oh, my son, I'm your mother. You know, your mother loves the son. I go, if you love me, you're not going to yell at me. I'm not tolerating it, period. Right. Now, guess what? When I go there, she doesn't yell at me. And even further, we took her out for a birthday. She got, she got, she got lost again. She starts acting up again. And my girlfriend goes, uh, uh, no, 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 let's get out of here. I'm going to, I'll take care of it. I'll take, guess what they do? Nobody's involved in me. She's mm. yelling at her, her boyfriend, my mom. She's yelling at, you know, her cousin, whatever. Who does she not yell at? You. Me. Yeah. Me. She's still yelling. I can't fix. I can't fix who it, who it is. She is. Right. But guess what? She's not going to do. She's, she's not going to yell and scream at me. She's not going to be abusive to me. Period. I, I, I have my my. I told my friend that his 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 older sister was nasty, and I said you have to understand. Every time you talk about being around your older sister, it's it's painful. She's disrespectful. She's sly. She pisses her wife off. So I said, listen, sometimes you have to understand that regardless of the family relation, if somebody can't treat you right, then they don't get access to you. So he stopped at he stopped talking to her. Uh, but the the aunt was still involved with the with his children on their own. The, the son starts to get married, goes to get married, right? And now he says he has a relationship with the aunt. The mother, his mother says, I'm not going to the wedding if she comes. It's like, this is his, this is their oldest son. He's, he's 
death, he wants her to be there, wants the mother and father to be there. Mother and father Bo in unison go, if they if my aunt, if my aunt, if your aunt comes, we're not coming. Right. So he calls me up. And I said, let me let me say something. I totally get that they've done a lot of times. I said, you, you, you know, your aunt has, hasn't been the best to your dad and hasn't been the best to your mother. But what what are we talking about? This is your wedding. And I go, you're breaking your neck to bring these people to see you get married. But what is the real focus? The focus should be you and your wife and your marriage. And you want these people there to see you tied a knot. And neither one of them can get over. Now, the, uh, the aunt was like, well, uh, well, if you know, I don't know how that's going to go over with your parents because she had already they had already created boundaries with her. So they weren't talking to her. I said, but you I go. But here's the thing. Now, I, I, I your, your mom and dad want to put constraints on what you do on your wedding as if they can't they can't stay away from each other. For three, the stinking three to four hours, maybe five hours that it takes to get married, um, you know, to have the dance with your mom and whatever, the, whatever the heck is going on or whatever has to be done. You can't avoid each other to eat the to eat the cordon blue and the prime rib for right. yeah. one second. You cut the cake and you can be out. But they would not do it. And the mother said, I will not. I refuse to go to the wedding if this woman is there. And I said to him, also, let's be honest. Your aunt didn't say, hey, I won't come. What did the aunt say? The aunt was like, well, uh, I guess she's, that's not going to go over well. But the aunt also didn't say. She didn't I, give an ultimatum. She didn't give an ultimatum, but she also didn't say, you know what? If, it's, if I'm going to create a problem, maybe it's best I don't come. But here's, so I was, I was telling him, I said, neither one of these people care about your wedding. And, and this. This was my good friend. I was like, he don't care. And your aunt doesn't don't care what they could have done as adults. I mean, we're talking about 60 year old people, right, who could have made a phone call and said, look, I know they could have made a phone call and said, hey, I know we don't get along. Let, let's just can we just pull it together for for the four or five hours that that your son gets married We'll go. I won't say nothing to you. You don't say nothing to me. We'll keep away from each other. And this way, you, this way, your son can have the 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 wedding with the people that they want. They couldn't even make that decision. And I said, you make your choice about who you want to come. Let the chips fall where they may. Hopefully neither one of them show up and you don't have to deal with. He goes, yeah, I really want them to come. I go, no, but you want them to come as people who they're not. Right. You would like for them to be there and be peaceful, but that's not an option. Like when you're negotiating and thinking about options, you go, man, I wish they could. Yeah, I know you wish, you know, you wish, the... you wish your mom was more reasonable. Yeah. You wish your aunt was more, more respectful. You wish your father wasn't, uh, wasn't soft enough to let your let your mom control the situation. You wish your, 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 uh, your, your uncle or your, your, uh, your, uh, your uncle. Yeah. Your uncle wasn't such a punk that he didn't tell his tell your aunt, your horrible aunt to just chill out. You well, wish all of those things, but none of those things are the that's, case. That's why I like that phrase. Like you can wish in one hand and shit in the other and <laughs> see which one fills up first. Right. <laughs> but and, yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, he had the wedding. Right. And ultimately, the aunt ba she bailed out and basically was like, I'm not coming. And the mother and father went. But uh, but in the back of my mind, I would have. That's not I would, good. I would. I would have told them both not to come. That's what I would have done. That's yeah. what I, I said. Yeah. You. I said when it comes down to it, I said having these people who infinitely are trying to stick in their nose into your relationship and into your life, you need to take a stand today and understand that you're cleaving to your wife and you're going to make these decisions. And if they're not going to deal with you as an adult in this marriage, then get rid of them. Yeah. If they, all they mean is harm and 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 chaos. Get rid of them. Because I guarantee you, it's not just at the wedding. My we had a similar situation with uh, we had the baptism of the baby. My brother, he has you know three kids. He was there was a baptism. My dad goes, look, your mom. I'm tired of your mom harassing me. Please. And my dad didn't say I'm not going. He said, look, I, I want to go, but she doesn't stop harassing because my mom would come over mm -hmm. and talk to my dad, and we've screamed at her and yelled at her. And eventually, you know, she's still not listening. So we, you know, what do we do? My brother, who's a maniac, he goes, listen, let me tell you something. He goes, 
to her. He goes, if you show up at his, ta- if you step foot within two feet of his table, I'm going to throw you out personally because <laughs> you're not going to fuck up my baptism of, the, of my <laughs> child, right? And my brother is so nuts that she listened. Why? Because he don't give a F. Because he has a history. <laughs> he has a history of crazy, like, quick behavior where you go, oh, he means it. He's not, right. he's not just saying that. He's right. not saying there's going to be a problem. He has created problems before. He had, my mom had some something where she wouldn't clean up. Uh, she didn't want to get an exterminator or something. He threw out all the dishes in the kitchen. He, he made a whole thing where he goes, all right, I'm going to get rid of everything. Threw out everything in the fridge, threw out all the garbage, all the plates, like everything. Uh-uh. Oh, oh, man, he's out of his mind. Oh, he's yeah. out of his mind. But he's respected. But, no. but he's respect. He's feared. Yeah. Whatever you got to do to get that respect. He's feared, so she listens. You have to create. Now, I'm not suggesting that you got to be a maniac. You don't have to be a maniac. I'm not a maniac. You just have to set your boundaries. Yeah. And when you have that moment of control, next time you have a barbecue and your mom, you go, you're not invited. You're not invited. Or you don't even tell her. Let her find out. How? Why wasn't I invited? Oh, because every time you go in, you make a, you annoy me by telling me what, what I can and can't do. So I'm not having that. Yeah. Right. Now she knows, oh, if I mess with him, he is going to. Those are boundaries you set with all people, including your family, right yeah. up front. You're and that's, not gonna make me uncomfortable. It's it's a level of, it's, it's a level of it's, I'm sorry, it's a level of honesty, but it's also a level of credibility. It's the fact that when you say I will not tolerate this, that you mean it. Here's an interesting thing, and this is this is back to you, Harry. As much as your mom was wild for the night and she used to go at your dad, right? Yeah. And your dad, anytime your mother would come around, your dad would like cower. Oh, here she comes. She's going to bother me. She's going to bust my balls, right? But he used to bust your balls. Absolutely, yeah. You would say, don't talk to me about, stop telling me how to drive to this. Don't tell me to do this. Stop arguing with me about this. But he had the balls of, uh, he had the balls of steel when it came to screwing you over because you were a good son. And I had to keep putting him on suspension. I literally would put him on suspension. I go, 30 days, we're not talking. What? Yeah. I go, 30 days, you behaving like an animal. I'm not doing this. I'll see you in 30 days. And then he would try to forget. Like, next, I go, not till January 16th. <laughs> That's it. You know? And I would do it like that. I go, January 16th, you can contact me. Until then, I don't want to talk to you. And what and if then, he contacted you before then? I would keep telling him, January 16th. That's it. I wouldn't respond to anything you except January 16th. You wouldn't pick no, up the phone. text via text. January 16th, 30 day suspension is over. <laughs> And Did then he, he addressed the, the suspension. Or no? uh, I, I don't remember how we addressed it. But at some point, I think I just wrote it in text the one time I go, your behavior is atrocious. I go, don't hang. He hung the phone up on me. That's what it was. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I remember that. I, I remember. go, you will. This is the last time you're going to hang the phone up on me. Yeah. Uh, uh, now I'm not going to speak to you for 30 days. Right. 30. Oh, OK. Whatever. Whatever fight he said. Didn't respond. Didn't respond. And when he would text me back, I would just put the date. I looked up the date, what it was. And then he did some other egregious of shit. I go, now it's 60 days. Mm-hmm. And I did a full 60 days. And then it was fine for a little bit. And then like two weeks later, he started acting up again. Then it was 90 days. This went on for a year. Yeah. I mean, 30, 60, almost a year, 90 days. And finally, he calmed down. Now, does he still act up? Yeah. And then I got to put him in check again. It wasn't the last time because he gets, in, gets comfortable. And then when things are going well, he reverts to that mentality because that's all he knows. Yeah, but now I mean, just it's just about keeping your word. My dad had a situation. I drove his car. I was helping him out with something. He wasn't here. I was taking care of something. That was a fair request. He's not here. I had to use his car. I, the handbrake didn't work. I almost got into an accident. This is a car I've been telling him you got to get rid of this car. Mm-hmm. This is over twenty years old. You're not fixing this car. You keep getting it fixed like in bits accident. and pieces. Yeah. Like I go, this is a dangerous car. Find the handbrake. I go. I will never step foot in your car again. Mm. Don't ever ask me. Three days later, he asked me to pick him up at the airport. Uh, he's got a couple people come in luggage. I go, I don't have a car for that. He goes, you can use my car. I go, what part about me never stepping foot in your car don't you understand? Yeah. And he calls me up. What's wrong with the car? What do you mean? What's wrong? What are you, stupid? We yeah. just had a conversation. Yeah. We just had a conversation three days ago that the brakes on this car don't work. I don't feel comfortable driving this car. The brakes are fine. They're not fine. Guess what? I don't know how he got home. I, to this day, I don't know how he got home from the airport. Yeah. No clue. Didn't even ask him. He never brought it up again. I'm never stepping foot in that car again. Now, those are dumb little battles you got to fight. Guess what? Guess what? He knows I mean what I say. 
Yeah. So if I'm at a wedding, he's not going to give me some bullshit at my wedding. He knows better. Yeah. He knows. And that's to the credibility. I I give you one thing, and then we got to be out. But uh, my 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 father had his fourth stroke, and he was in in uh, full care at the at the. The, he had to have full round the clock care. And, he was in a facility. Yeah, like and, I, yeah. and he used to, when I would come and I used to come every day and visit him, and he would throw things at me, throw food at me, throw stuff. He just was just really nasty. He said like he was like I'm going out like Gary Coleman till the end. <laughs> and he uh, and I remember telling my mom, I'm never going back to see him again. And my mother was like, Well, he's on, you know we don't know how long we're gonna have him. We don't know how this did da, it. Da, da, da. And it got worse. He and he, was like, last week, they say he's got a couple days. And I, my father passed away uh, two months before my past, my father passed away. I did not see him before. The only time I went to see him is when I went to identify the body at the end. And this was the, the because at the, at the end of his life, his decision was to be disrespectful and to be abusive to me till the very end. I mean, we've always had that kind of animosity, but till the end, even on the on the bed with a food tube and the whole nine, he says, "I'm going to treat you like crap, and you're going to take it because I'm." And I was like, "No, I'm not." I go, "I don't have to sit in a in a in a in a in a, in a home full care facility home, come to see you to give you company so you can throw so I can be a target for you to throw things on me." And that was the decision that I made because I practiced this ace thing. No matter what. So when I'm saying to, to when I talk to people and I say, this is how you have to conduct your life, not conducting your life is is the way you could feel bad about it. And I, and I don't feel bad about not going because of the fact that the the the, the core of the decision was this. Continue to allow somebody to abuse you after you've told them clearly that you're not going to tolerate it and and let them do that until. Till they, till they feel some remnants of 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 success which what let me, let's be honest there is no there's never a time when people are disrespecting you where they all of a sudden go hey i've done this enough let me be a better person that doesn't happen and on my father's last on his deathbed we i stopped going seeing him i did everything that i had to do to care of my mom all those other things that I was responsible for that I thought, but I was not going to go and have this man throw things at me till the end. So mm -hmm. GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcast. It's signed up for the Patreon, patreon.com slash manschool202. Consultations at DanteNero.com. Click on consult. Advice from Harry at gmail.com. We love y'all. Check it out for the bonus content on Patreon and like it, subscribe and comment. Please, peace. We out of here. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't.